Hello guys and welcome back to this new video. Today Blackmagic Design just dropped the final release of Fusion 17 so I wanted to celebrate uh, with a small video. This one is not actually a proper tutorial, it's more me uh, just playing around with Fusion. Uh, but let me show you what I'm going to create here. Okay, this is a pretty simple one and let's get started with this. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is to add an image plane and a particle image emitter. And as always with particles, we need a, a particle render so that we can display our particles. Okay, now we want to add a P turbulence uh, we might want to type 18, 1.8, and the density to 4. These values works for this logo. Um, you may have to tweak them a little bit to fit your needs. Okay, let's have a look at this turbulence effect. Oh. One thing that we want to do is go back <coughs> to the particle image emitter and change the lifespan to 200 frames and the variance maybe to 30 frames. We want to go to the style tab and in the fade control we want to add some fade out. So go back to the turbulence effect. We want to maybe recede a few times so that we get a different result. I think this one is good enough. So let's add a p directional force. And we want to, sorry, we want to change the direction of the force and also the strength. Let's see what happens. Yeah, this is quite nice, but I think the strength is a little bit too much. So let's do something like that and maybe in the condition Let's lower the probability here and see what happens. Maybe like that. Yeah, I think this is perfect. Maybe we can go back to the P-turbulence and recede a couple of time more. I'm not convinced with the look of it. Yeah, I like this one. Okay, so now what we want to do is to add a fuse. Retime a 3D. This is a fuse made by Jacob Danel. So when you will be downloading this one from Reactor, don't forget to drop a donation to the guy who made awesome fuses, macros and plugins. So let's go to frame 1 and set a keyframe with speed of with a speed of 15 and let's see what happens okay so when we are right about here i think we can go back to zero and drop another keyframe and we can now open the spline editor now with these three dots we can choose show only selected tool so it's easier to work with this spline Maybe we want to move this one to maybe frame 20. And we can do something like, maybe something like this. Let's have a look. Yeah. It looks awesome. And now what we want to do is to add a, another fuse, which is the Time Machine 3D. And this fuse is made, I think is made by Peter Van Ote. So if you want to support him, um, since he's one of the guy uh, leading the Wisaclex community, you can actually go and become a patron for Wisaclex on Patreon. Okay, back to the Time Machine. 
uh, we want to change the mode to remap and we want the source frame to be zero and the end frame to be 200 and the target to be 30 and 230. If we display the design machine now, we basically just offset the animation. Okay, let's add a loop here. Now we can merge the image plane and the particles together and we want to move to frame 30 and in the image plane and in material tab at frame 30 we want to drop a frame and set the opacity to 0 move back one frame and go back to 1 so that this is what is gonna happen and we want to move this one like so so that the particles and the image plane won't intersect so let's have a look again at the result yeah that's awesome now we can add a camera and let's let's yeah let's watch through the camera there and we can move back in the Z. Let's move to frame like yeah like 15 and move to frame 35 or so and punch in. Maybe we want something more snappy here and we may want to have the fastest speed of the animation of the camera to happen right about here. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, now we can add a render 3D and I want to leave this one to software render and it's okay as is at the default yeah perfect and we want to add a brightness contrast and just leave it there for now just remember to pre-divide and post multiply it and now we can add a background node let's play with this background node yeah something like that and maybe yeah, something like so. And now we can go back to the brightness contrast and increase the lift value here so that we can see our logo again. Okay, now we just have to add a defocus node. And we can move to frame 30 and drop a frame in the focus size. And we can move to frame 45 and set this to 10 yeah looks nice I think we can increase the threshold here to zero and maybe just decrease the bloom level a little bit and this sorry and this one should be eased Okay, nice. Now we can add a fast expo glow. So let's maybe we can make this one on the warmer side here. And move back to frame 30. I think it's a little bit too yeah, too saturated. Oh, now it's okay. Okay, let's let's add a keyframe here in the range. And increase the value to 2 and we want to move ahead and bring back the value to maybe even less than that something like that Thank you. 
I think we just need to add a fast chroma and go back to frame 30 add a keyframe to the size and I think something like that right about here yeah feels nice we may want to offset this like minus 10 frames or 5 frames actually yeah better uh, okay now let's finish this off with a film grain and we want the grain to be not monochrome and just decrease the size a little bit yeah something like so and let's have a look at the result i think the effect is pretty nice remember that you can use whatever image you want as a logo uh, you may have to tweak the particle settings a little bit in order to get the proper result but nonetheless is a nice result oh um, a little side note the macros that I was presenting to you in the latest tutorial are finally out on reactor so be sure to grab them and please consider supporting me when doing so I think this is a wrap for me uh, so thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one bye bye